everyone, it's Kelsey Matheson here. So this is video number three, and I'm gonna walk you through the process of setting up an account so that I can actually purchase a cryptocurrency. And I originally recorded myself going through the whole process on my computer so that you could see what I was actually doing. But the issue was that, of course, it displayed all my personal info because we're dealing with banks and, you know, addresses and date of births and, you know, social security numbers. And I'm not a talented enough editor to figure out how to black all of that stuff out. And truthfully, nor do I have the time. So. A little bit about me, I run multiple businesses. I'm a success coach for female entrepreneurs or women in business. I'm also a mom and a wife, so there's already a lot on my plate. So instead, I'm going to explain what I did and what I experienced, and I'll use some visuals to help me out as well. So if you want to skip the play-by-play, -play, then feel free to fast forward this video to the end where I'll list all of the steps. But if you want me to walk you through it, then stick with me here, and, and trust me, it won't take very long. Okay, so I logged onto the website called Coinbase, which was recommended to me by the Divi Project founders. And the website is coinbase.com, and it's basically where you can buy and sell digital currency. So basically, I started by entering my email address on the homepage, and I clicked Get Started. Easy peasy. Then you're taken to a page where you, where you sign up. Um, essentially. So they ask you for your first and last name, you choose a password, and you select the state that you live in. So I tried a number of different passwords, but they really want you to use a secure password. So I recommend coming up with something that's super, super secure and make sure you have a copy of it somewhere. Then you verify, of course, that you're not a robot and that you are over the age of 18. And then you click create an account. So I did, it was all very exciting. But of course, before you can really get started, you have to also verify your email address. But you know, going back to your email and clicking the link in the email that Coinbase sends you is pretty standard stuff. So after that, I was taken to a page that said, New York State financial regulations require us to verify your identity. So I'm sure all states are similar and I'm not really sure what the situation or the policies are for Canada or the UK. But again, I think it's probably pretty standard and it also specified that doing this would not impact my credit score. So I had to enter my legal name, my date of birth, my address, and the last four digits of my social security number. And then it asked me, what do you use Coinbase for? And my thought was, well, nothing yet. I'm still going through the process of setting up an account so I can use Coinbase. But anyway, I, I knew what they meant. So here were my options. Investing, trading, trading on other exchanges, which I'm not really sure what that means. Um, online purchases, online payments, and business. So I clicked on investing and I was able to choose more than one option. So I also clicked on online payments and business. I didn't choose trading because I'm not at all familiar with how it all works yet. So I left, I left it with just investing online payments and business for now. Then it asked me, what is your source of funds? And I was like, at first I was like, well, what do you mean? Like, do you mean what am I going to use to buy my first cryptocurrency? Cause I mean, there's money in my bank account. Why do you need to know what the source of it is? So I found that strange, but my options were occupation, investments, inheritance, and mining. So I chose my occupation and then it asked me um, to select from a drop down menu what my current job is. And I was very pleased to see that they had business owner as an option because a lot of times they don't. So I, click, I clicked on that and then I added the name of my business as my employer. Then it had me answer some multiple choice questions. And I have to say, I, I kind of felt like I was back in school taking an exam. So the first question was, which cross street is closest to your address? And I literally had to pick the closest cross street, which I actually had to pull out Google Maps to figure it out because I, I didn't know any of the streets that were listed. And now in my defense, I just moved to my neighborhood. So um, then they asked what country have I lived? And they listed five countries that I truthfully had never heard of and had definitely never lived there. Um, but they also had none of the above as an option. So I chose that. And then they asked me, with which name are you associated? And they had a list of names, and in that list was my middle name. So 
which is kind of weird, right? If you think about it, it's pretty creepy that all you have to do is plug in your name, your address, and your date of birth, and in a matter of seconds, they have access to personal info, like my middle name. Anyway, then it asked again for, um, for information about my social security number, except this time it asked me for my first two digits, and then you press submit. And then a little green circle pops up saying, success, your identity has been verified. And I was like, yay. So uh, after that, you're directed to a screen that says, welcome, let's get started. And you have a few more steps that you need to complete to purchase your first digital currency like linking a phone number to your account. So when I make large tra transactions, apparently a short code will be texted to my phone to confirm that it's me. Then I had to choose a payment method and it said that Coinbase supported a variety of payment methods, including bank transfers, credit or debit cards and bank wires. But after I read that, I thought, isn't the point of this to get rid of dealing with banks? Well, I guess you have to start somewhere. So you can also link up PayPal, but from what I understand, that's only for selling your coins. It's only for the use of withdrawing. Um, in order to buy coins, I needed to be, I needed to basically to connect either my bank account or my credit or my debit cards. If you use your credit or debit cards, then additional verification is required and they can be used for lower limits, but you can buy like instantly. A bank account, um, when it's linked to your Coinbase account, it has higher limits and doesn't need extra verification, but it takes approximately four to five days for the transaction to process. That's how I understand it. So if you have any info on this or if any of my info is wrong, please feel free to comment and we can do a little Kelsey's corrections corner if necessary. So I sat there for a while and I pondered about connecting my bank account or a credit or debit card, but then I found out with credit and debit cards, they also charge you a 4% convenience fee and it seemed more complicated with the extra verification. So I linked my bank account. And there's a secure login form where you find your bank, you add your username and password, you choose the account that you want to use, and then you link it to your account. So after I linked my account, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin popped up as options of coins that I could purchase. Now, the one thing I'm curious about is now I hear there's there's over a thousand cryptocurrencies worldwide. So why do I only have access to three on Coinbase? Like, I'm, I'm really curious about how they choose which coins they want to sell. And the second thing I was kind of shocked by was that I could purchase one Bitcoin for four thousand three hundred and fifty four dollars. Ethereum cost two hundred and ninety seven dollars and Litecoin was fifty one. I was like, but. What, what do you mean? So then I realized, wait, 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 these coins can be broken down. So I could just buy a percentage of a Bitcoin, for example. So you can enter the amount in US dollars that you want to spend, or you can select the amount of Bitcoin or Ethereum or Litecoin that you want to purchase, and it will calculate the amount for you. And there's a small fee involved. So just for fun, I plugged in $25 to buy Ethereum and it calculated that I would be purchasing approximately 0 0.0790 blah 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 worth of Ethereum for $25. And then it asked me to deposit it into my Ethereum wallet. So I paused and I thought, wait, do I have I have to set up a wallet first or will or when will it be automatically created for me when I make the purchase? So I decided to stop there and do a little bit more research on having or creating a wallet and figure out how all of that works first. But at least I've now set up an account with Coinbase and I'm pretty happy about that. And I think it was a successful next step in this whole journey. So again, I'm Kelsey Matheson. I'm an entrepreneur, a success coach for women, and I've partnered with Divi Project to learn more about cryptocurrencies and how this financial innovation works. So thank you for watching. Please leave comments or questions below and I will make sure to address them and we'll see you next time.